Welcome to Low Tier Fun Tier, where I take a look at the Rank 1 lineup for a nation in War Thunder and pick out my favorite vehicles. Let's check out the Japanese Air Tree. I'm going to pick out my favorite fighter, bomber, striker, and premium aircraft in rank 1 of the Japanese air tree and take them into the chaos of arcade battles since that's what everybody does at rank 1. My first pick is the J1N1, a very early example of a twin-engined heavy fighter. At the end of the 1930s, the Japanese needed a long-range bomber escort and the resulting work produced several new twin-engined long-range fighter designs, including the J1N. The original version included a set of two powered gun turrets in the tail, but those were quickly phased out in order to save on weight and complexity. The basic J1N design eventually served until the end of the war in a variety of different roles, including interceptors, reconnaissance, and night fighters. In War Thunder, the J1N1 that we get is the early version with the double turret in the tail. Compared to single-engine fighters and biplanes it ends up facing, the J1N1 is a large and heavy design, and it sits at battle rating 2.0. It can take a pair of small bombs, which gives it a little extra utility to hit targets of opportunity on the ground, and it also packs a 20mm cannon mounted in the nose. The J1N1 ends up being quite capable at the lower ranks, holding its own in speed and firepower, despite not being especially maneuverable. Now the gun turrets in the back can sometimes ward off more agile biplanes, and anything that you can land a couple of hits on with the forward-facing cannon is probably not going to last long. Very importantly, the plane is actually pretty tough, and it can withstand a surprising amount of punishment. Overall, the J1N1 has a lot of versatility, and with a little practice, it'll be a very strong grinder for rank 1. Next is the H6K4 Bomber, which is surprisingly effective at the lower ranks. This plane was first produced in the mid-1930s for the Japanese Navy to fill the need for a long-range maritime patrol bomber. About 200 of them were built in a mix of reconnaissance, transport, and maritime bomber versions. As newer fighters were introduced, the H-6K was gradually withdrawn and transitioned to operations with less risk of combat, where it served until the end of the war. The H-6K was eventually replaced by the H-8K, which I did a full review of elsewhere. Now in War Thunder, we get the H-6K-4, which was the maritime patrol bomber version, and represented a little bit more than half of all of the H-6Ks that were produced. Now, for a rank 1 plane, the H-6K-4 can carry a pretty respectable weapon load, including torpedoes, which is something I always love to see. It can take a pair of heavier bombs for hard targets or clusters of ground units, or it can take 12 smaller bombs to do, like, drop-and-scoop bombing of soft light targets all over the map. My personal preference is to go with the larger 800 kilogram bombs, which end up having a pretty respectable blast radius and can be used effectively to blow up clusters of armored cars or SPAA guns. Now, the defensive armament has blind spots, but it's not completely terrible for a rank 1 bomber. Of course, that poor guy standing exposed up in the nose turret has one of the worst jobs in War Thunder, but even still, the H6K4 ends up being a pretty effective bomber if you can climb to altitude with it. Now, you can even sometimes win matches entirely by yourself just by flying around, climbing to space, and bombing the ground targets. Now, lastly, while it's not easy to do, you can fly treetop level and use a two-second fuse on your bombs to occasionally blow up fighters who are chasing you. It's hard to pull off, but when you do, it's amazing. Next is my pick for a strike aircraft the D-3A1. 
The Aichi D-3A was first introduced in 1940 as a naval dive bomber operated from Japan's fleet of aircraft carriers. The plane went through a somewhat protracted development, and early prototypes of the plane suffered serious performance problems, but also showed that the basic design had some strong potential, and so the work continued on ironing out the flaws. Some minor aerodynamic tweaks were made, and a more powerful engine was added, and that ended up solving almost all of the performance problems, and gave the D-3A satisfactory marks when it eventually entered service. This aircraft has the dubious distinction of dropping the first bombs on American targets during the Pearl Harbor raids, so those of us here in the States kinda wish this one wasn't so good at its job. The D-3A served all the way until the end of World War II, but were shifted to land-based duties when higher performance replacements became available for, for the larger carriers. Now in War Thunder, the D-3A-1 is classified as a dive bomber at battle rating 1.3. The first thing to say is that the flight performance of this plane is really solid. It climbs pretty well, and it has good maneuverability at medium speeds. Plus, it's got air brakes. Now, its payload isn't especially strong. Just two small bombs and one medium bomb. But if you actually use it in a dive bombing role, it can deliver really accurate hits which can compensate for the low yield of the individual bombs. Now, the forward firing guns are only a pair of 7.7 millimeter machine guns, and they don't hit very hard at all. So, despite its maneuverability, it can be difficult to use the D3A1 as a traditional fighter, since you need a lot of time on target to bring things down. But, after you drop your bombs, you're still useful, and you can sometimes get a few kills with it. Overall, this is a really solid ground attacker for a Rank 1 vehicle. Lastly, my pick for a premium has to be the A7 HE1. Now, as you probably know, this is a Japanese version of the Heinkel 112 fighter from Germany. The HE-112 was developed in the mid-1930s, but it was rejected by the Germans for frontline service in favor of the BF-109. Instead, the Heinkel was offered up for export sales, as it was still a modern fighter. Now, the Japanese were bogged down in their horrific invasion of mainland China, and they needed a replacement for the older biplane fighters that were still in service. Domestic replacements were still in development, so a small number of HE-112s were purchased as a stopgap measure and were designated as the A-7 HE-1 in Japanese service. The Japanese pilots really didn't like the plane, and they favored lighter, more maneuverable fighters. But the Heinkels did see some combat service over China, even though it was phased out as soon as domestic fighters became available. In War Thunder, the A7 HE-1 is a premium fighter at battle rating 2.3 in rank 1. The defining feature of this aircraft, quite simply, is firepower. It has a pair of 20mm cannon and another pair of 8mm machine guns for a combined burst mass of about 2.4 kilograms per second, which is a serious punch for a rank 1 plane. It's got solid speed and engine performance, but it'll be outmaneuvered in one-on-one -on -one turn fights against a lot of the lighter fighters. Still, if you throw this thing into a furball and just start unloading on anything that gets in front of you, it's possible to rack up some respectable kill counts just through brute force alone. Combined with the premium bonuses, this is a very strong pick for a Rank 1 premium aircraft. You might not live long, but you can do a lot of damage on the way out. Well, that's about going to wrap up low tier fun tier for the Japanese air tree. I hope you enjoyed this look at my favorite low B Japanese planes. As always, thanks for watching.